Hey guys, welcome back to What Am I Missing podcast. I have a brand new series for you about mastering the human experience. Awesome, hey? So here's where we're going to start today. Does it feel like you keep having reoccurring lessons or themes or patterns of circumstances just randomly popping up in your life? Do you keep dating the same kind of people, getting the same kind of boss? Do you struggle with never ending battle with your weight or with your health? Do you keep having the same financial experiences, highs or lows or just lots of lows? Do you feel like every time something good happens, something bad chases you down right after? If you do, you are exactly where you need to be today. So welcome. I have been led to start a new series, which is all about mastering the human experience. You see, when I work with my kids or clients or family members, I have been gifted with seeing the world in a totally different way than most people do. I be- I see life from a bird's eye view, which provides me a totally different perspective than just the ground floor vision most people see life through. I see everything as a feedback system to help us propel each of us towards our most evolutionary growth. But this isn't about me. This is about you and my desire to share these insights with you weekly. And so I'm inviting you to participate in these weekly chats with me as we journey through some of the heavy and confusing topics of life. And we can peel back some of these layers and finally learn the reason why things happen like they do. Sound good? Alrighty. In fact, life is playing out exactly like it was designed to. Now, I do not believe in destiny or predestined fate, but what I do believe is first we choose the lessons that we want to learn on earth while we're still in our cosmic states or our soul bodies. And then we choose the life of the human that will support us learning those lessons. And we'll get into that one in a couple of weeks. Most of the time though, our greatest lessons come from, well, suffering and pain, right? When things are going along nice and smooth, we're not usually keen to noticing insights and awareness. So pain and suffering are guideposts, just like fear is a messenger and anxiety is really an important alarm bell. And I will get into that in another episode. Man, there's so much I want to tell you, but I'm going to take this slow and give it to you one nugget at a time. This series is about helping you to hear the messages that life is trying to share with you. And I promise if you listen regularly, you'll begin to see your life in all your circumstances and experiences in a really new, interesting, and fulfilling way. Literally, this is like the life manual that you've been asking for. So I'm getting an image of being in a lab and science is my jam. In high school, I loved chemistry so much. Yeah, I was a keener. I would stay after school and just play with different formulations and see what would happen if I added, you know, catalysts or conductors or activators. And this is very much the way that I have learned to approach life as one big experiment. It's an experience. So don't let it get you down. Don't let it bog you down. And just make sure that you've taken the steps to get the notification so you can listen to the next podcast when I release it. I'm here to guide you as your chemistry teacher. But guess what? You are the one who will test the theories, run the experiments in your life and discover your new levels. Because life is really a lot more interesting and fun when someone can give you a little bit of an instruction manual or at least shed light on your path so you don't feel like you're constantly bumping around in the dark. So I asked Source a couple of years ago, how can I take what I feel, this enthusiasm and this childlike curiosity for life and bottle it up so that other people can experience it, if only for a second? My deepest desire is for people to see life the way that I do. I can't run the experiments for you, but I will be here weekly to give you a new experiment and different formulations to play with in your life. So I have one question, are you in?
Are you going to play with me weekly and run some experiments in your life and see if you can just change things up a little bit if you'll get a different output? Alrighty then, let's do this. And I feel that we should start at the beginning. Sound good? Okay, well, let's get our lab coats on and start formulating. So, where are my 80s and 90s children at? Who out there played the insane game of pin the tail on the donkey? For those of you who didn't ever get the pleasure, if we can call it that, of playing this children's game at parties, I'm going to give you a quick overview because there really isn't much to it. So pin the tail on the donkey is a game which was played by a group of children. Apparently the earliest version of this game is listed in the catalog created by the American Game Collectors Association and is attributed to Charles Zimmerling who created the game all the way back in 1899. That's over 110 years of birthday party mayhem. Who was that guy? And what else did he think was fun or funny? Oi, sorry, I digress. It's common at birthday parties and other family gatherings, church picnics, potlucks, that kind of thing. And a picture of a donkey, maybe we can ask Charlie why he chose poor donkey to be the one who'd be dismembered. But you take this picture of the donkey with a missing tail and you put it onto a wall, which is supposed to be in easy reach for children. And then one at a time, each child is blindfolded. And this is where shit gets crazy. The child is handed a paper tail with a push pin or a thumbtack to poke through it. The blindfolded child is then spun around until he or she gets dizzy, disorientated, and the child dangerously gropes around, still blindfolded, and tries to pin the tail on the paper donkey. So let me get this straight. We tell our kids not to walk around with knives in their hands, but in the spirit of fun, we can put a blindfold on them, spin them around till they're dizzy and often falling down because they don't have the eyesight to stabilize or reorient themselves in their surroundings. Then we put a pointed pin in their hands and while other kids are trying to avoid the weapon carried out by this blindfolded drunken sailor. Mm, pure insanity. Definitely not for the bubble wrap children that we're raising now. And the player who pins the tail closest on the target wins. The game, which was a group activity, was not designed to be competitive. Who are you kidding? In the 80s, everything was a competition. Think, who can eat a jawbreaker the fastest despite the bleeding tongue? Or bike riding could you do that without turning it into a race? Or does anybody remember getting pushed off the chair when the music ended in musical chairs? Competition is what gave us grit and determined. But like these new century kids, every, every feel good kids soccer game where everybody is a winner and winning was only of marginal importance in the game of pin the tail on the donkey. This game that was designed by Mr. Charles to be entertaining, watching the children stumble around and try to put the poor donkey's tail back on in the right place. I wonder if he might've had a drink or two before he came up with that one. As a side note, apparently this game is also used in child development research. According to researchers, it is used as a, to test anxiety levels in children. Really? Who wants to have a blindfold on tightly around their head, covering their eyes and be spun in circles until you have no idea which way you're facing? Yes, of course, this nonsense is going to espouse some level of anxiety. You have no idea where you are. You feel like you're falling with a pointy weapon in your hand and all the pressure in the world from your peers who are going to laugh at you because you're more likely to win the lottery than get the tail in the right spot insane pressure. And for anyone who's afraid of failure or as a perfectionist, this game is going to be very triggering. You're 100% set up to fail, but no one tells you that before they start spinning you and laughing. So now that you have an idea of this game, we're going to use the pin the tail on the donkey a little more diversely to explain the disorientation phase of your childhood. 
So this is us. This is exactly what happened to us. And it happens to everyone. So you are not alone in this. You may not have had to endure the torturous game at the party, but I bet you did experience the discombobulating effects in your childhood. In fact, it's all part of the brilliant formulation. So I will encourage you first by letting you know that you are on track. And even though you may feel like parts of your childhood belong in a thriller or a highly dramatic movie, it was not random and you're not the only one. So imagine having a blindfold on and being spun in circles for seven years. And everyone who you go to for instructions or assistance continues to spin you even more. This is exactly how someone would feel if they came to earth as a beautiful little soul, squishing itself into the human body and playing pin the tail on the donkey for the first seven years of their life without realizing what is going on or without any instructions on how to get out of this insanity. But this had to happen. This is the part of the journey, yours, mine, our parents, our friends, we've all been through it. We start out as these beautiful, pure, creative energy. We have it all. We're fully connected and aligned to the unified field of all possibility. Our mothers then carry us in their womb and we have everything we could possibly need. Food, water, shelter, warmth, oxygen, a cuddly and safe environment. And then we go through the most traumatic experience, birth. Neither the physicality of being born nor taking your first breath after being kicked out violently of your warm cocoon is going to do anything to keep you in that perfectly calm Zen state. Now we're no longer just creative energy floating around in the ether, nor are we a safe little tadpole in a warm private pool. Nope. Now we are being appointed as an individual. Ah, 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 ah. That was my scary laugh. And now that we are an individual, we instantly get to feel separate, alone, disconnected, unsure, and forgetting the resources that we once knew that we had. And more importantly, forgetting who we are. We become aware of our lack and our separateness so that we can feel the opposite. We can then notice when we are connected, held, and loved. And at this stage, we start to learn that we have to do something to get food and water to ensure our survival. We learn that there are certain things that we can do to get love and attention from our parents and there are things that we can do to lose it. Through trial and error, we learn that there is a way to be that will produce more favorable reactions and we begin to internalize that there is a better, best and optimal ways to be human. So we're filing all this data and we're learning the world's version of good and bad. And we find out that if we do something good, we're praised. If we do something according to the world that is bad, we're scolded or worse. We start to conclude from our experiments what is good and what is bad, what is wrong and what is right. According to the first gods of our lives, who are our parents and our teachers and our religious leaders, society and peers, they're going to tell us different things by their reactions. So we start out in this beautiful natural state of bliss where we have it all and we are it all because we are perfect and we are complete and we are whole without even being able to compare it to any experience of lack. And then so we're splashed with cold water, woken up from our dream state and abruptly upon arrival, begin to experience the loss of this perfection and harmony. Talk about traumatic. The people in our life want to teach us about the world because they think they're helping. And so the blindfold goes on and the spinning begins and you are stuck in a really long game of pin the tail on the donkey. Except that it's not a 30 second panic, it's a seven year panic. And it's stretched out even past that beyond into our lifetime. We become detached from knowing our incredibleness and we start orienting to the world's perspective of what is safe. Just like the insane game of 
pin the tail on the donkey involves movement and spatial sense and coordination and trial and error. This is the same way that we begin to orient the world's objectives, its views, its perceptions, and its judgments. It never occurs to us that these gods of our lives who feed us and clothe us and teach us and portray their vision of what love is could ever be wrong or that they could ever be acting out of their own pain. We only assume that the problem is us and our wrong thinking or our deficiencies. And as we are being spun in circles with that blindfold on, we hear what they're saying and we do our best to make sense of it all. But the problem is the game doesn't end. No one ever stops you, holds you straight, takes the blindfold off so you can see clearly, so you can continue to layer on these crazy beliefs that are so untrue about yourself. And just like the science experiment, you keep testing your theories that you created about yourself as you go through life and finding out that sure enough, what you believe about yourself, what you ex are accepting now is true, that became your programming during the first disorienting seven years of this game, is that you believe all that you'll ever be and all that you are. Well, my love, I'm here to take your blindfold off. I'm here to hold you straight until you stop spinning. Because I want you to see that this happened for a reason. Before you chose the human body you are going to experience life on, on earth, you chose a lesson, you chose a mission, an evolutionary experience that you wanted to practice. Let's say, for example, that, I don't know, you wanted to learn that you were worthy. So during your pin the tail on the donkey disorientation phase, you were shown, told, and you internalized that you were not enough and that no matter what you do, you will likely not succeed. You will spend most of your life struggling financially in relationships, in your health, in other areas. So all through your programming, you're being hypnotized into believing something is wrong with you. So you can spend the rest of your life discovering how your perceptions of yourself are incorrect and then finding ways to shatter the illusion of not enoughness and gift yourself with the realization that no matter what you do, you are enough. You lack nothing. You are a powerful creator. And we transcend our illusions by becoming aware of them and growing through them. Like the lotus flower, it blooms through manure. We grow out of our limitations and our programming, our pain and our suffering that are associated with that feeling of failure and not being able to validate our worthiness. We can now begin to connect the dots of this is why I do that thing I do and this is why I act that way. But we still keep living out our unresolved issues from the first seven years of our life. And that's really important. The unresolved, the unfinished business. And that is why we still feel like we're spinning in circles, dizzy, disoriented, handicapped by our blindfold. This orientation that occurred is still running the show because you are still peeling back the layers of the programming. You're still learning how to evolve and grow through it. And you're still transcending your perceptions. So if you ever feel like you're walking through life with a blindfold on, completely disoriented, where things start to make sense and then you run into another obstacle, you're absolutely correct. You're not crazy and there is a way out. And I'm going to get into that in future episodes. But for this week, let's summarize the takeaways. So first, pin the tail on the donkey is an anxiety triggering horrible game. Number two, your parents thought they were helping you, but they didn't realize how confusing the mixed messages were. And number three, and most importantly, you are still living out your unresolved issues from the first seven years. Number four, but be here next week so we can continue this chat about how you can finally take your blindfold off. If you still feel somebody else would benefit from this, please feel free to share it because honestly, sharing is caring. And 
like you might be the light that someone needs in the world today. So spread the love and I will see you next week as we continue our journey of mastering the human experience. Much love.